Now we want to specialize our duality considerations to uh, tensile duality. So uh, we have already seen that uh, this um, special case was given by uh, the perturbation function uh, phi of x and y uh, equals f of x plus g of lx plus y, where um, f was mapping from h to our bar, uh, g was mapping from g to our bar, and l <coughs> was mapping from h to g. And L is linear, and a F and G are proper convex and lower semi-continuous. Okay, so this was the the setting for for for, for our problem, and <clears throat> the primal problem was obviously then given by the minimization of uh, minimize. Yep. So minimize f of x plus g of lx um, over x in h. And the problem here for finding optimality conditions is that you don't have the additivity for the subdifferential. So you know, we, we know that um, df of x plus L star L adjoined uh, G of L uh, DG of LX. So the sum of the subdifferential is contained in the subdifferential of this of this function, but we do do not know that also the other um, inclusion is satisfied. And in, in, in general, it is actually not satisfied. So um, we know a sufficient optimality condition, namely that we find a point X such that the subdifferential of f of x plus l star subdifferential of g at lx is um, uh, contains zero. This is sufficient, but it's not necessary. And we will see that under some constraint qualification, we find a necessary condition. Okay, so this is our primal problem. So what we want to calculate is the objective function for the dual problem. So now let's calculate phi star of 0b. So let b be in g. OK, so what is phi star of 0b? This is the supremum over x in h, y in g. And you take the inner product of 0b with xy, okay, minus phi xy, just the definition. So now we want to, um, uh, we want to just uh, insert everything or, or simplify a bit uh, what we know still supremum over x and y. And now we know that the inner product uh, is given, as we, as we defined it, was, was given by the sum of these inner products. So inner product of 0 with x is 0. And what remains is just the inner product of b with y minus phi xy, so minus f of x minus <coughs> g of lx plus y. OK. Now, we see that we have lx plus y here. So it, it seems to me, or it makes a lot of sense to just uh, replace y or substitute uh, y by another variable. So let z be given by lx plus y. So now we take the supremum over x in h and z in g instead of y. Um, <clears throat> and then we have 
the inner product of b with z minus lx minus f of x minus g of z. Uh, why do we do this? Because we want to separate the variables x and z and then separate this into two suprema. Okay, so then this is the supremum first of all over x and h and now we collect only those terms which contain x so that actually we don't need any z here. All right, uh, what are these terms? Well, we have this here. We have the inner product of b with minus lx. And now I use the property of the adjoint um, to just say, well, I take minus l star b in the inner product with x. So actually we would have minus b with lx in the inner product, but the adjoint um, is the operator which you can write on the other side to compensate for the, the, op uh, the operator L. Okay, so this is just by the definition of the adjoint. You can also think about the transposed matrix. Um, this would give the same result here. So uh, for, for vectors, uh, if you write linear operators as matrices, then the adjoint operator is given by the trans transposed matrix. Okay, so now we have this part here. So uh, b with minus lx um, minus f of x. Okay, this is what we have. And you see no z plus the, the, uh, the supremum over z in g. And here you will observe no x. And you have, we have b z minus g of z. Okay, finally, what do we get? This is the conjugate of a function. This is f star of minus l star b. And this is g star of b. So you see here that you get a dual problem, so d, which has essentially the same structure as the primal problem, but you take the uh, conjugate functions, you take the adjoint of this operator, and you take a minus here. So the dual problem is maximize um, minus f star of minus l star b minus g star of b over b in g. Okay? This is the dual problem. And um, as you see, the, the problem of the dual, as I said, have the same structure. And you can, in fact, observe that if you take the dual of the dual, you get back to the primal um, via the same process. All right, so we have found the dual problem. Great. Um, let's now um, determine what the constraint qualification is. So, um, um, the constraint qualification uh, requires um, the domain of phi. Okay, and actually we need this operator pi of the domain of phi. Okay, what is this? As we said, this is the projection of the domain of phi on the second component. So we take all those y in g, all these uh, perturbations here in the, in, the, in, the, in the argument for g. Uh, we take all, the, all those y um, such, that, such that there exists an x in h such that, well, this phi of x, y, 
um, is less than plus infinity. So f of x plus g of lx plus y is less than plus infinity. Okay. And okay. Mm. What does this mean? Well, we take all those y and g such that there exists an x and h. What does this mean that the sum of two functions is less than plus infinity? Well, we, we need that both f and g uh, have values plus, uh, less than plus infinity. If one of them is plus infinity, then we automatically have plus infinity. All right, so this means that f of x is less than plus infinity, or in other words, x is in the domain of f. And uh, Lx plus y is in the domain of g. All right. So, um, again, we are only interested in the y's here, um, since uh, the projection is on the, on the y component. So, we are only interested in those y's, which can be written as, well, something in the domain of g minus lx. So, um, and x uh, has to be in the domain of f. So, this is, well, just y is in, well, domain of g, something in the domain of g, minus lx, and L, uh, and, uh, and so we map the domain of F, uh, since F must be in the domain, uh, X must be in the domain of F. We map this with L and just subtract it from Y. Okay, and you see that this is obviously equal to dom G minus L dom F. Okay, and so therefore, this uh, gives us the projection of the domain of phi on the second component. And you see, well, the domain of g is a subset of g, and the domain of f is a subset of a, and if you map this uh, of h, and if you map this with l, then you get a subset of g. So we are in the right space. So we have the constraint qualification that 0 is in the interior of uh, dom g minus l dom f. Okay, this is the constraint qualification for our problem um, for for the problem p, to be precise. Okay, this is the constraint qualification. Very straightforward, by the way, all these calculations. Um, okay, so now we have the CQ, and by the way, uh, implied by, uh, for example, well, if the domain of G is, is the, the whole space G, then CQ uh, is satisfied. Or if there exists a point x hat in DOM F such that L x hat is in the interior of the domain of G, okay, then this is also satisfied. So uh, you see that there are some some easier special cases. You don't don't may, maybe you have difficulties computing this, but for example, if the domain of G is the whole space, then you're safe. Okay, so uh, we have uh, formulated the primal problem. We have formulated the dual problem. We have formulated the constraint qualification. Now let's uh, give the optimality condition. 
So the optimality condition is most easily written uh, in terms of um, P and D having uh, the same function value. So the optimality condition is x bar is optimal for p if and only if there exists a b bar um, such that b bar is optimal for d and the function values coincide. So f of x bar plus g of lx bar equals minus f star of minus l star b bar, this one minus g star of b bar. Okay, let's just write this a bit simpler. So b bar is in g, of course. So f of x bar plus f star of minus l b bar plus g of l x bar plus g star of b bar equals zero. And now you, see, you probably see the point. You have those two and this is greater or equal than uh, the inner product of x bar uh, with minus l, I think there must be a, yeah, a star here, l star b bar, inner product. This is greater or equal than, well, inner product of l x bar with b bar, which is equal to x bar inner product with l star b bar. And you see, that this is always, always, always greater or equal than zero. Now the optimality condition says that this should be equal to zero and um, this can only be um, satisfied whenever this young fentyl inequality is satisfied with equality and for both of these relations so since all of, both, of, both, of, both of these um, summons here are independently greater or equal than uh, this, um, the, the respective values which add up to zero, uh, equality is required for both. And equality for the young fentyl inequality uh, holds if and only if minus L star B bar is in DF of X bar and um, now since G is proper convex lower semi-continuous uh, you can for example r also write this if you want this symmetric as Lx bar is in the subdifferent of, of G star at B bar, or you can just write uh, B bar is in the subdifferential of G at Lx bar. So these are the simultaneous primal and dual optimality conditions for this problem. And you also get this, by the way, by this condition 0 B bar is in the subdifferential of phi at uh, x bar 0. Uh, you, you can just calculate it if you don't believe me. Um, and just an interesting observation here, b bar is in dg of lx bar, so you can write 0 is in um, df of x bar, plus L star, and now you take B bar, and B bar is in DG of LX bar. 
So this is also an optimality condition which does no longer contain B bar. So this is um, optimality for uh, uh, the primal problem only, but it still requires the constrained qualification. Uh, yeah. Okay, so what we have shown now is that for the Fenchel duality, we have uh, the, the expected um, optimality condition here, um, which, which, holds, um, which holds under this constraint qualification. And this expected optimality condition is that you can just write this as or take, not only take the zero in the subdifferential of the whole thing, but you can de decompose this and write zero in the subdifferential of f plus l star subdifferential of g at l x. So under this constraint qualification, you can um, you can basically use um, the um, the the sum formula for the subdifferential also in reverse, and then you get your optimality condition. But without this constraint qualification, this is in general not necessary. It is a sufficient condition, but it's in, it is in general not necessary. So this, this um, basically is a calculation of all um, the, the objects which we have observed for, for the general duality for this special case of Fenchel duality. And in the next video, we will also do our best efforts to, to make this for Lagrange duality. And in this case, we will recover all the nice things on uh, Lagrange multipliers and the Slater condition.